fact is, the more dogs there are, the more problems there will be because of it. We need far, and I mean far, less dogs in the world, not more. My personal preference is zero. The plain truth is that dog ownership creates various negative effects for non-dog owners and fellow dog owners alike. It is an imposition. Here, I am stating in no uncertain terms that dog ownership is a contaminant that spreads far and wide, rather than the litany of usually presented reasons I might typically give, and which we all know too well. I will begin with this. A lot of people don't seem to want to acknowledge this, or perhaps don't even know it, but dogs are toxic. One study of air samples in three different states found that 10 to 15% of airborne bacteria came from dog feces. Much of the soil is contaminated with dog geohelminth, which is a word that means parasitic worms, and canine parasites can linger in pastures for up to seven years. Dog waste even finds its way into our tap water and public drinking supply water reservoirs, and is often left in areas where people of all ages go in order to exercise and where children play something truly alarming. The eggs of Toxicara canis, a parasitic roundworm commonly found in the intestine of dogs, cannot be destroyed by bleach or any other disinfectant chemical. And that is not all. Dog urine, which is rich in nitrogen, actually kills grass as it concentrates over time. While dog allergies are not usually fatal, they can trigger anaphylaxis in some people. They can be a source of extreme discomfort and illness, even when not fatal. In a recent comment exchange under my Myth of the Protection Dog series, in which I debunk the notion that protection dog is anything other than an oxymoron, one particularly persistent dog defender kept trying to analogize a guard dog to an alarm of sorts. Actually. I had first made the point that dogs make terrible alarms, but one point I had to make. My alarm will not bark at its own shadow for hours on end. For that matter, my alarm will never slobber, shed, hump, aggregate allergies, waste pollute, or chase wildlife animals. What we're talking about here is negative externalities. We have a solid case against dogs. For the simple fact, Dogs routinely assault people, destroy their property, wreck their peaceful existence, end lives prematurely, and engage in all manner of public fouling. One way in which dog apologists often attempt to argue in defense of dog ownership is by talking about how dogs benefit dog owners. But the simple truth is that dogs at best provide some of the people who own them with a subjective level of emotional fulfillment, albeit at the cost of all these impositions I have been discussing here and elsewhere. Fact is, dog ownership cannot be decoupled from all the detrimental impacts it has on society. 
For those who want to bring up working dogs and service dogs, well, I am sick of having to make this point. But the vast majority of dogs in existence aren't like those dogs at all. Further, most if not all of these can be replaced with superior technological alternatives at this point. Arguing that a few dogs somewhere in the world pull sleds, detect cadavers, or assist the blind is not an argument in favor of keeping dogs as household pets, especially as a widespread mainstream tendency. searches we could do. If you have any recommendations, let me know. Fact is, the more dogs there are, the more problems there will be because of it. We need far, and I mean far, less dogs in the world, not more. My personal preference is zero.